In this video, I want to demonstrate how you can join data from another table. So my primary data set here consists of census tracts in the Denver Aurora urban area. What I will do is I will go to the catalog pane and navigate to the folder where I have my data saved as a comma delimited CSV file. And I'll simply click and drag that into my GIS. If I open that up, you'll notice that data consists of all the new variables I want to add to each of my census tracts, but it also contains a variable or attribute called FIPS, which is the Federal Inventory Processing System code, which is a unique value for each census tract in the United States. If I now look at the attribute table of my census tracts, you'll see the same thing that there is a FIPS value, which really just consists of the unique state FIPS. In this case, 08 is the FIPS code for Colorado. The county FIPS, those concatenated, and then the track number, and then all of those put together result in a unique identifying number for each census tract in the United States. So what we're going to ask ArcGIS Pro to do is to collate our data based on those FIPS values. Now, one thing to know is that this FIPS value in the shapefile I'm working with here is in text format. The issue is that the FIPS value in my CSV file is in numeric format. And so even though they look the same, they won't be able to see each other. So what you'll find is that in a lot of the data sets that I provide, I've already calculated for you a FIPS2, which is nothing more than FIPS reproduced in numeric form. So you can see that this now is type double, which is a form of numeric data. Okay, So I'm going to use FIPS2 in my shapefile and match that with the FIPS in my CSV file in order to join that data. So one thing you always want to do is you always want to join data to your primary data set, which in this case is your census tracts. So I'm going to right click on den tracts in this case and go to joins and relates, add join. Now in the geoprocessing pane, that emerges. It's going to ask for the layer name, which is the primary data set. In this case, it's Dentrax. The input join field is the attribute or variable that you're going to match with the other one in your CSV file, and that's going to be FIPS2 in this case. Notice that it's already reading the join table as being the CSV file I added, and then the FIPS column within that CSV. Okay. Go ahead and hit run. And then one thing you always want to make sure is that it correctly joins. So just open up your attribute table again and scroll all the way to the right. And you can see here where it matched FIPS2 with the corresponding FIPS code in the CSV file and then joined those particular values and all those new variables. Okay. Um, once you've got those joined, I always recommend for safekeeping that you just sort of bake that data in there. So if you ever need to bring up the shapefile again, you don't have to worry about bringing in that CSV file again. So I always like to right click at this point with nothing else highlighted or selected, right clicking on the track shapefile and exporting those features. You're basically just exporting it on itself. In this case, it's the den tracks. The output location was, is gonna be your geo database. And then the output feature, I always just will call this something like Dentrax B for bake. And then I just hit run. That way, that if I come back to this at another point and I just want to bring in that particular shapefile, I can just bring in the baked version with that data fully entrenched inside of it. Okay. Now, one thing important to keep in mind is that you can join data from another table based on a common attribute like FIPS, but it doesn't have to be a FIPS code. It can be if you have a data set that consists of neighborhoods and those neighborhoods have names and you have another table with those exact same names, you can join based on that common attribute. So it really can be based on um, anything. It doesn't have to be based on a FIPS code.